Hi, my name is Aksana Bocharova. I'm the owner of um, Aksana's Produce Farm that is located in Crompton. We're in the greenhouse right now and uh, it's a great addition to my um, season extension. So right now we're looking at chard that was planted here in the um, middle of September. I'm harvesting it these days, I'm selling it at the market. There are a few different kinds of chards here. I, I pick them all um, together and, and do mixed bunches and call them rainbow chard. Um, it looks pretty, people like it. Uh, the farm is, uh, is organic. I'm growing my produce organically here and I'm hoping to get it certified this, this coming winter. Right here we see beads that were also transplanted here in middle of September. They're not performing as quick as chard, um, but I will be able to harvest it in, in March. I purchased this land in, in the summer of 2013 and I wanted to farm it organically and get it certified eventually. But in order to get certified by USDA, you have to farm this land following organic practices for three years. So my three years were up in August of 2016, so I am actually ready to, to uh, try to get it certified. So it means we don't use any uh, man-made uh, chemicals, we don't use any uh, chemical fertilizer or pesticides, we do not use genetically modified seed. We have to use untreated seed if we cannot find organic seed. There are a lot of um, requirements there that, that we have to follow and Three organic farmers are happy to follow, actually. This is baby bok choy we're looking at right now. Very, very tender. Um, winter time, people, people are happy to, to get uh, fresh greens. So this is my, uh, a good seller at the farmer's markets. I was born in Russia and actually um, my dad, my dad was farming. He was a, a, a manager of a big, Big, a big farm in Russia and was dragging me to his work once in a while. And because I loved my dad, I fell in love with the profession. So when I was in the second grade, I already knew where I'm going to, to go study. So I wanted to be an agronomist as he was. Baby kale, this is red Russian variety. Um, uh, it's a little different than others, other varieties. It's, it's more tender and it's, I think it's a little bit tastier. And this is what I actually hear from my customers. So this, this winter I decided to grow only this kind, red Russian kale. After I graduated as an eighth grade student, I went to absolutely not, not prestigious agricultural college back home. Uh, all my teachers were shocked and my parents too, thinking that I could be, do better. <laughs> <laughs> being an being an, uh, an attorney or, or or a doctor or whatever, so I said this is what I wanted to do, and I'm going to do that. This is winter crops. This is the crops that are tolerating low temperatures. So I did, never wanted to heat up my greenhouse. Um, I just wanted to uh, grow what what I can without heating it to reduce my expenses and to and not to contribute to greenhouse gases here. I graduated um, gaining a Master of Science in Agronomy um, and came back to work for my, my collective farm where my dad used to work. Then after a while we, uh, then I got married and we decided to start our own farm and when, when it was allowed in Russia. So we started our own business, um, growing vegetables. We rented some land um, then eventually came back to United States to study farming here. In 1999, we came to United States to study farming business here with the intention to get some knowledge and come back home and implement it. Then I kind of liked the stability here in this country. <laughs> After struggling back home, um, we decided to to get our, try to naturalize here, to get our status. Um, as, and eventually we did, we, we were citizens here now. So we worked at the dairy farm and then moved to Maryland and uh, I, man I was managing a big, a big certified organic farm. And then at once I felt like I am ready for more, more challenges and I want to have my own business. So I started to search for resources and land to, to purchase my own property. And it happened in uh, 2013. That's this is all different varieties of bok choy. Um, I try to to have colorful things on, on my on my uh, in my booth at the farmers market, and also there are some researches telling that the dark leaf uh, vegetables, purple leaf vegetables, are more nutritious. So 
People know it, people are demanding. I'm trying to satisfy the demand. Being a small farmer, uh, the big thing uh, for us is to direct sell our product, to get the premium price for it in order to be um, efficient and profitable. So uh, we do sell at the farmer's markets. We sell in Can Island, at Can Island Market. We sell at Chestertown Market. We do two Annapolis markets and Lewis in the summertime as well. There is one uh, around market that is very important uh, to have um, and it's on Ken Island. It's a Christ, it's, it is at Christ Epis Episcopal Church. Um, it's on Thursdays from 3.30 till 6.30. We have a lot of vendors there. We have produce vendors. We have s soup and food vendors. We have soaps. We have olive oils. We, uh, we have a lot of, a lot of interesting, in interesting uh, things there. <laughs> This is Asian uh, greens Tokyo Bicana. So this is can be salad or you can stir fry it, whatever. So this is I just cut it like this, same as bok choy. So it's not coming back. But kale I harvest like outer leaves. Yeah. But it's, it's still coming up from the heart. Cool. So, yeah, kale is great. I am also developing a CSA program. It's been going on for two years. Um, I would like to expand it. Um, the CSA program, is, as everyone probably knows, is when people are signing up for a, for a produce uh, in the spring. The funds are allowing farmers to pay for seeds, for irrigation supplies and other supplies. Farmers are short of funding in the springtime, so we know funding are coming, plus it helps us to plan how much to plant as well. So my big thing, I'm not, I don't like to waste anything. I'd like to be able to sell everything I I, I grow, so I, I do very, very careful and accurate planning. I decided to plant this um, strawberries in the greenhouse uh, for a few reasons. First reason, I want it to be protected from, um, uh, from wind uh, and mostly from rain, so it will not get any f fungus diseases. And the second reason was to get strawberries earlier than everybody else. And I do get it here two weeks earlier than, than outside strawberries. The CSA model, that works. Um, people get whatever is in season at certain time. We have some crop failures, and sometimes we don't have that in, in a box. I'm calculating the cost of the box for a certain amount of money per week. It's always good yeah. stuff, and it's always a few. It's not a few kind of vegetables. It's never like full box of kale or full box of chard. It's always the variety. It's, it's at least five up to ten different kinds of vegetables. This is 24-week program that starts in May and goes on until end of October. I do not turn anybody away, so anybody who wants to join later, you're welcome to. It started to have some demand for a couple of things, so you're growing a couple of new things this year. Right, this spring, our uh, last spring, I, I planted, we planted asparagus patch here because my customers are asked for it, um, so I decided to plant it. Plus, it's the earliest crop in the season, so it will, start, it will start bringing me some income very early. Fermentation is a significant part of my business. Um, this started actually before I started growing because I needed, I needed some income coming in. I knew I will not be able to handle full-time job and, and do a farming. So I started doing fer ferments and started selling it. And gradually I was able to graduate from my full-time work and become a farmer, a full farm, farm time, farmer, just because of this fermented stuff. So we do a lot of sauerkraut. We do pickles. I ferment other vegetables. A lot of my produce is going into my fermented product. So there is no waste here on the farm, and I also buy, uh, buy my produce from local farmers. I buy from Arnold Farms, I buy from uh, Homestead Farms. Um, whoever has something that I need, um, I, I, do, I do buy because I cannot produce enough for my ferments here on my farm. It's yeah. kind of grown and expanded now. So. That's great. Well, as everyone knows, it's everyone in the, in the media and in publications right now that fermented food is good for our gods. It, it helps us to digest our food. Basically, it does help us to, to break down everything we eat and eliminate it from our, our bodies so we're not getting intoxicated with the waste. All of my ferments are sold at the farmer's markets. Locally, it's also sold at Chestertown Natural Food Store. It's sold at um, Cross Feed and Garden in Galena. Um, I also have it in other areas of the of the state. Um, 
U Unity Church, Church Hill Nursery sells it. Sun and Earth Natural Foods in Annapolis, Ruth Beggar Craft Juicery, Annapolis, Priapic Gardens, Sisselton, PA Bone Farmstead, Brandywine, Kent Island Farmers Market, Juice Fresh Juicery, Rehoboth, Delaware, Historic Farmers Market, David's Natural Market, Gambrels. It's everywhere. Lot. It's everywhere, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the more information can be found on my website at www.oxanasproduce.com. Um, my email is available, my cell phone, I'm always available to answer any questions.